morning. Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. I woke up this morning. Actually, I didn't wake up. I was already awake, sitting in my house, had a fire going in the fireplace, drinking my first cup of coffee, just a little bit after dawn. And uh, I heard a, a dirt bike tearing it up. And I was like, whoa, because I've never heard that here before. And I thought that we had an intruder on Shofar Mountain. Um, and so I was getting ready to implement our intruder plan, which we have. And I decided, well, because sometimes when you're in a house, and we have a very small house here at Shofar Mountain, um, you can't really hear where things are coming from real well. So I stepped outside and then I quickly determined, oh wow, that, that bike, that dirt bike, which I can still hear now, and this is a while later. It's about, I don't know, half mile away on a dirt road near here. And so somebody's got a new dirt bike and they're tearing it up. I'm like, all right, cool, no intruder. I can go back and enjoy my coffee. And so <clears throat> that got me thinking though about a bunch of things. So this is gonna be a little bit rambling, um, but I think you could probably get some nuggets out of it. Hello, goat. <clears throat> um, first thing is this, you know, an organized group of just like 10, 10 people, you know, with a few dirt bikes, uh, maybe a couple ATVs, four wheelers, or uh, those new things, those uh, side-by-side Can-Am kind of things. Somebody around here has one of those. A um, couple pickups. If they were bad people, or if they became bad people, in a grid down W R O L T Wacky situation, they could be a significant threat. You know, those little motorcycles, you know, those little 250cc dirt bikes or whatever, they can ride through that, right? And they can get out of places and into places quick. And so before you know it, you could be surrounded, you could be penetrated, uh, you know, your perimeter. Um, they could scout things out and get away those kinds of things. <clears throat> and so I started thinking about that. And then I started thinking about, you know, you, right? The average viewer of Viking preparedness. Probably most of you live in some kind of suburbia, just because statistically most Americans do, right? So you have neighbors um, on different sides of your house and stuff. And so I was thinking, all right, you know, most of y'all don't live in this, right? I get that. So I was thinking, wow, there you are in that situation, grid down situation. I've lived in suburbia before. I didn't know all my neighbors. I certainly hadn't organized all my neighbors into some, you know, cohesive group should the balloon go up. And so I'm trying to think of something useful to tell you. And <laughs> I started going to like threats, right? You know, six guys, mildly competent, mildly, could take down the average suburban house, and in fact do on a fairly regular basis with home invasion robberies. Now some of you guys are letting your ego and your testosterone get in the way right now, and you're going, not my house, man. I got my Benelli Super 90 loaded with number four buckshot. And you gotta sleep sometime. And if they're mildly competent, they'll watch you for a little bit and figure out when you are sleeping. And before you know it, bam, they got you and yours, right? No bueno. And so the solution to that, obviously, <laughs> obvious to me, is more people, right? Security is expensive in, in terms of manpower. When you're pulling, when one is pulling security, when one is, example, this is a, a road that we built here on Shofar Mountain. This road links to a trail uh, that goes off the property that I thought uh, the dirt bike was on this morning. Check this out. Really, to properly secure this sector of Shofar Mountain, see, I'm giving you some secrets. You need somebody watching that. When do they have to watch it? Really, 24-7, right? And so if you got a person here watching this, how long can they actually be on guard duty? For every one position you have, you basically need three guys. People. Could be a woman. Could be a teenager. 
you know, depending on what their task is, if they're supposed to watch this intersection from wherever. Um, but you need three people. You know, you got to sleep roughly eight hours a day. You have to take care of personal hygiene and eat and, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and when you're on security, you don't do any of that. You're pulling security. That's an important concept, which maybe we'll get into later, not in this video. But security guys, that's all, and gals, that's all they do is pull security. Watch. Be alert. Be ready to respond. Have a plan. You know, rehearse plan what we're going to do if something happens. And so, you're in suburbia. You got nobody. It's you and your wife, maybe a couple kids. You need people. All right, so are the people coming to your house or are you going to their house? See, that's the other thing. You should work these things out now. I realize that I'm a planner, you know, by nature and training, and, and a lot of people aren't. I get that. Um, but you really need to think this through now because you'll do better in the event if you've thought some things out. And so you're either going to go to Bob and Sally's house or Bob and Sally are going to come to your house. Now, see, we run into the American thing right away where I don't want to leave all my stuff. They got to come here. You know what they're thinking? I don't want to leave all my stuff. <laughs> they got to come here. <laughs> Y'all got to work that out. Who has the best place to go to? Because you do have friends, right? I mean, you have friends who are mildly into preparedness, but they probably don't live right next door. And if they don't live next door, they're not helping you pull security. You have to have proximity. Uh, I was just um, advising somebody the other day. They moved uh, from a far off state uh, to be our next door neighbors. And they bought tens of acres of land. And they've got a house on it already. And they're getting ready to move in. Um, definitely one more family, maybe three more families. And so we were discussing where to put site the new houses that were going to go up. And, you know, you've got a couple options. They have all this property. They can spread it out because they came from kind of tight confines. And so the idea of having big yards is kind of cool. But from a security standpoint, that's not cool. You really kind of want to have all your houses close together. It also maximizes your usable um, terrain. Like in, in the, uh, the old villages in, in medieval Europe, the, the houses were pretty tightly packed. And then all around them were the fields and the things like that. So that's something to think about. But, you know, if we could take turns pulling security for the community by sitting on our front porches, and so when it's my turn, I sit on my front porch or back porch. When it's your turn, you can sit on yours and still pretty much see the same things. That sure makes it easier than having to suit up and go out to the OP and, you know, that kind of thing. So start thinking now about who you're going to hook up with. Who are you going to link up with? You got to have people. I, you know, it's, it's one of my new things that I'm beating my drum on. You have to have people. And you need to start identifying these people now. Now, if you've just decided I am staying in my neighborhood and I've tried to have the barbecues and I've tried to uh, get together with my neighbors and they just don't get it, man. Here's something else I was thinking about today. Let's say you move uh, two or three families into your place, right? After the event or immediately before is even better. So they're living in your living room, in your guest room, in your kids' room kind of thing. You know what? I'm thinking some of the houses in your neighborhood, um, when this event gets worse and worse and worse, are going to end up being abandoned. Some of your neighbors are going to leave. They're going to go to Grandma's house. They're going to go here. They're going to go there. And it's a fine point. But if it is truly, you know, the end of the world as we know it, if it is truly a chaotic situation, say like Hurricane Katrina times 10, um, might be able to move Bob and Sally and their three kids across the street into that now abandoned house. Something to think about. I am not saying go take the house from somebody, right? That's stealing. Um, but if it's not being used, uh, maybe you could go care for it. Make sure, you know, no damage happens to it. Things like that. So that's something to maybe put into the back of your head. Something else is right now, and I, I tell people this, food is cheap. Food is cheap. Wheat beans, rice, corn, you know, you can get that stuff for pennies on, on the pound. And after you've taken care of your family, and I recommend 12 buckets per person, um, and that's light, that's a light year of calories. Um, consider putting up food for your neighbors or for the people who are going to show up or whatever. Um, because at the end of the day, if your family's sitting there well-fed, fat, dumb, and happy, and the four houses around you are literally starving to death, you got problems in the making, right? And so consider that. If you can't convince them to store food, uh, you might have to store food for them. And then a final point, and you know, because I said this is rambling, 
um, rambling thoughts, but it was something I was thinking about. A lot of y'all do have like bug out locations that you've kind of half developed, right? You've got that plot of land about two hours away, five hours away, three hours away. Maybe you put a cabin on it, things like that. <clears throat> the more stuff you can pre-position there, the better, because you think you're going to take your bug out vehicle with your trailer and, uh, <clears throat> you know, all your stuff when it's time to go and the reality is you might not be able to or your vehicle might not make it or whatever you may end up walking into your camp with nothing so security problems there right a lot of places in this country if uh, you leave things unattended for long it's gonna walk away right people are gonna realize you ain't there they're gonna walk all over your place they're gonna break into your little shed they're gonna do that kind of thing so you might want to start consider caching um, and again, there's there's some stuff on YouTube on that, but you know, there's in-ground caches. They're the most secure, really. Um, there's underwater caches. <laughs> Those are more secure if you do it right. Um, there's above-ground caches. There's concealment caches. There's all these things. But, you know, if you just put stuff in a shed, somebody's going to bust into it and steal all your stuff. But what you could do is get something like a backhoe, because around here, you don't dig with a shovel. Maybe in Carolina, you can dig with a shovel. Dig a hole, make a vault, you know, use a, a Vantec or marine grade plywood or even regular plywood if that's all you have. I wouldn't use OSB. Build a little box in that hole, make a really good reinforced lid for it, and then uh, put your boxes, you know, your tote bins or whatever, um, buckets of stuff in that hole, put the lid back on, cover it with a couple inches of dirt and leaves and, and stuff like that. Don't have it right next to your cabin that you built. Leave the cabin unlocked so somebody doesn't kick the door in to see what's in there. And then you'll have stuff there when you show up. Um, something to think about, having some stuff pre-positioned. All right, rambling thoughts. Based on your comments and what you're more interested in, I may spin off into some more detailed videos. Hey, if you like it, share, tell your friends. I'll see you out there.